In the last video, we talk about uniformly accelerated motion. The most common example of uniformly accelerated motion is an object falling towards the Earth's surface. In this video, we describe the motion of free falling bodies and we will identify whether all objects are falling at the same rate. We remembered in our last video that during 4th century BC, Aristotle suggested that heavier bodies fall faster than lighter ones. This was proven incorrect by Galileo Galilei when he proposed a contrasting idea about free fall motion. According to him, objects experience the same downward acceleration when neglecting the effect of air resistance. Thus, all objects drop at the same instant, regardless of their mass and size, will all fall at the same time. With this came the concept of free fall or any motion of an object or body solely influenced by gravity. This means that the effect of air resistance is negligible and therefore has an insignificant effect on the falling object. Remember, however, that on Earth, free fall is just an idea since there is always some air resistance that will also act on the object or the body. To clearly understand this concept, take the situation as an example. Suppose that a person stood high on a cliff and dropped a rock from that height. Let us all assume that the velocity of the rock was measured at each second while it falls. For this situation, the effect of air resistance is negligible and only gravity acts on the rock. Our measurement of velocity is then recorded in this table. What do you notice about the data presented in the table? First, we notice that the figures have negative sign, right? This indicates a downward direction or a negative direction. Similarly, when something is going up, it is a positive direction. We have discussed that already in our vectors. I hope you can still remember it. Let us look in the figure now. Notice that as the rock falls, the distance between the rocks increases, but the time interval remains unchanged. From point A to point B, the time interval is still one second, right? And so until the last second. This means that the stone travels faster and faster as it falls down. Thus, it indicates an increasing velocity. Once again, remember that velocity is a vector quantity and its magnitude is increasing. After one second, the rock travels at 9.8 meter per second. At 2, 19.6 meter per second. The negative, I will repeat, is only used to indicate the direction of the vector quantity. Let us try to see whether the acceleration remains constant. Let us have this, point A to point B. At point A, the rock's velocity is at rest at 0 meter per second. Then at point B, it increased at 9.8 meter per second. When we apply this in our formula, I hope you can still remember, to get the acceleration, A is equal to final velocity minus initial velocity over time. Then, our acceleration is 9.8 meter per second square. Let us see if it is the same for point B to point C. Here, we will get time interval at the denominator, which, when we compute, will give us the same result. If acceleration is calculated until time is equal to 5 seconds, we will still get the same value, which is negative 9.8 meter per second square. This constant acceleration of freely falling body is called the acceleration due to gravity or the free fall acceleration, which we will use a small letter G as symbol. Remember that this is true only if the object is found near the Earth's surface. The value varies slightly with distance from the Earth's surface because the Earth's gravitational pull also varies. But 
that is too small to consider in computations unless the object is found beyond the Earth. We mentioned earlier that free fall is not observed on Earth because of air resistance. This air resistance or air friction is a force which opposes the motion of a falling object. Thus, we can say that its direction is always opposite to the direction of the object's motion. We can say also that it increases with the speed of the object. The faster the object is falling, the higher the air resistance. Also, air resistance increases with the increase of surface area of an object. Imagine that the air is composed of several air molecules. As an object falls, these molecules collide at its surface. Therefore, the larger the surface area of an object, the more air molecules will hit the object per second and oppose its motion. We can observe the effect of air resistance when we drop a paper from a certain height. Let us say we drop one crumpled paper and another one is flat. When we drop the papers at the same time from the same height, which one do you think will reach the ground first? Alright, it will be the crumpled paper. It is because on earth, it is not only the gravity that affects a falling object, but also the air resistance. And since a flat paper has a larger surface area than the crumpled paper, the flat paper will experience a greater air resistance. This is why even if they have the same mass, the flat paper falls is lower than the crumpled one. How about when a hammer and a feather are dropped at the same height? They have different mass, right? But because of air resistance, the feather will easily be affected by the opposition to this falling motion and will reach the ground last. This same experiment was done on the moon by an astronaut named David Scott. Because the moon has essentially no atmosphere and therefore there is no air resistance, the hammer and the feather fell at the same time with exactly the same acceleration. This only proves that all objects, regardless of their size and mass, fall with the same acceleration. Now, do you remember the equations we had in the previous video? Since free fall is an example of uniform accelerated motion, we will still use those formula. However, by convention, we will use a small letter G instead of A to show an acceleration affected by gravity and is always constant. Since falling only applies in vertical position, we will also replace D with Y. Again, here is the summary of the equations you will use in free fall motion. I put check for the variable present in the equation and x on the variables that cannot be found in the equation. Before I end this video, free fall is not only for objects dropped from a certain height. This also covered objects thrown downward and upward. To answer this, we have three cases that must be taken into consideration. First. When an object is simply dropped from a rest at a certain height, we have to assign its initial velocity automatically equal to zero and solely affected by constant acceleration g. How about when an object is thrown downward? In this case, thrown and drop are different. Since it is still affected by gravity, it also experiences constant acceleration. It is still covered with the concept of free fall, however, the initial velocity has a value and is not equal to zero. Lastly, when an object is thrown upward, they still experience free fall. As an object moves upward, its velocity decreases until it reaches the maximum height. At its maximum height, the object will stop for a split second and starts to go down experiencing the same acceleration but this time with increasing velocity. The velocity of the object as it moves upward is in positive y direction while going down it is negative. At maximum height because it stopped momentarily 
its velocity is equal to zero. In the next video, we will apply these concepts in formula in solving people problems. That is all for this lecture. And once again, I am Gilmar De Castro. And see you in the next video.